Here at the University of Sydney's Brain and Mind Centre, the Frontier Research Clinic is focused on understanding people with frontotemporal dementia and related disorders. Frontotemporal dementia, or FTD, is the second most common form of younger onset dementia, which usually affects people under the age of 65. There are several subtypes of FTD. The most common subtype is known as behavioural variant FTD. People with behavioural variant FTD present with a range of behavioural symptoms. Their family members often feel that these changes in behaviour are more distressing and difficult to deal with than with cognitive problems like memory loss or language. Well, it wasn't so much the memories. It was the, it was the social inter, inter, inter relationship with people. That was the first thing which started to change with her. Then as a consequence of a lot of that behavioural change with, with, with withdrawal from a lot of social activities, which, you know, that's when you all of a sudden start to realise there's a problem. I guess he was responding to things he might have seen on the computer or when people rang him to persuade him to buy something or um, put money into something. He was very almost gullible. And, um, and I, I can't actually tell you, but we lost about 10,000 that first 12 months, but I cannot tell you where it went. I mean, he can go for, you know, quite literally days at a time and not acknowledge me when I speak to him or not, uh, or become quite angry over the tiniest little thing. And, you know, he can be quite cruel um, and, you know, and say, you know, really quite thoughtless things which are hurtful. I think one of my biggest challenges is to be able to motivate him on a daily basis to do anything that I consider would make his life worthwhile. Even getting out of bed is a fairly major effort. While he's always had a healthy interest in football, mm -hmm. it's now quite an unhealthy obsessive. Yeah. There is literally uh, football on television 24 hours a day. On the surface, the behavioural changes in behavioural variant FTD seem quite diverse and don't relate to each other. This is why we tend to investigate and treat each of these symptoms individually. In our review paper, we propose that there is actually a common thread that links all of these symptoms. We discuss evidence that these symptoms can all be traced back to an underlying deficit in the goal-directed behaviour system of the brain. Goal-directed behaviour allows us to change our actions in order to achieve whatever outcomes we desire. For behaviour to be classified as goal-directed, it must be sensitive to changes in the likelihood as well as the desirability of the outcomes. So for example, um, imagine that you're thirsty, whether or not you perform the action of going to the fridge to get a drink depends on the likelihood of you finding a drink inside. And the action of you opening the fridge also depends on your desire for a cold drink. Um, if you don't want a cold drink, you might make a cup of tea instead and so you don't end up opening the fridge. Behaviours like eating, interacting with people and engaging in your hobbies also make us consider the likelihood of gaining certain outcomes and whether we desire those particular outcomes. If the goal-directed behaviour system of the brain is damaged, a person's behaviour may become less sensitive to the likelihood and desirability of certain outcomes. They'd have less goal-directed control over their behaviour and as a result, their behaviour becomes more restricted and repetitive, uh, more like habits. In healthy individuals, there is a delicate balance between goal-directed behaviour and habitual behaviour. And we propose that in um, behavioural variant FTD, this balance is disrupted, and instead behaviour becomes much less goal-directed and more driven by habit. Scientists have extensively studied goal-directed behaviour and habitual behaviour in animals using behavioural tests such as the Contingency Degradation Test and the Outcome Devaluation Test. Animals learn to press different levers to get food rewards. This behaviour can then be tested to see if it's sensitive to changes in the likelihood of reward and changes in the desirability of the reward. Researchers have identified regions of the brain that are important for controlling goal-directed and habitual behaviour in animals. The equivalent regions in the human brain are affected in behavioural variant FTD. These are the sections you can see here that are atrophied or shrinking away in the behavioural variant of FTD compared to the healthy control. These include regions 
of the prefrontal cortex here, the orbitofrontal cortex and the insula, as well as the striatum and regions of the amygdala. This is a new perspective in the way that we understand the symptoms of behavioural variant FTD and understanding the potential links across different symptoms like eating, motivation, empathy, as a common underlying deficit in goal-directed behaviour. Our paper reviews the evidence for each type of these behavioural changes and outlines new ways to examine these core deficits by translating behavioural tests that are well established in the animal literature to the clinic. So the symptoms we see in behavioural variant FTD may seem very different on the surface, but they can all be traced back to deficits in goal-directed behaviour. Now, by investigating this root cause, we can develop new treatments that address this common factor. And by using similar behavioural tests in animals as we do in humans, we can evaluate these treatments simultaneously, from animal models all the way through to behavioural interventions, as well as clinical trials in humans. This is an important step in improving the lives of people living with frontotemporal dementia.